Hi everyone and welcome to the Syncretism Society Virtual Academy and my name is Mehmet and in this lesson we're going to be looking at the alphabets of Hebrew, Greek and Arabic. Uh, the first part of my Israel lesson was looking at um, Judaism, Islam and Christianity and showing how it connected to the numbers three, six, and nine, and how Islam connected with the moon, Christianity connected with the sun, and Judaism connected with Saturn. So taking those three religions, we're also going to concentrate on the languages which corresponds with those religions as well. So obviously, in relation to Islam, it will be Arabic. In relation to Judaism, it will be Hebrew. And in relation to uh, Christianity, we're going to look at the Greek alphabet. And ultimately, what my um, main aim in doing this video about the alphabets of those three languages is to kind of back up uh, what Brother Santos teaches about how all languages are one and they all come from the same root, which is Atum, Tor, and Bull. And what I'm going to show is by showing you the three alphabets side by side, we're going to see how each letters are pretty much identical. And then we're going to look at some intricate details of what particular letters mean and also how it corresponds to maybe planets or zodiac signs or just particular words and what they mean in general. And um, yeah, we're just going to syncretize it all and show you what it all means. I'm also going to use some info that I've learned from um, Stan Tenen, who is a Hebrew scholar and anyone into um, alphabets and languages and etymology and syncretism. I really suggest you check out his work. He's got a really good video called Dance of the Hebrew Alphabet. But I also watched one recently, which so coincidentally just syncretized with everything I did on this board. So I was managed to get some key things to add onto what I'm going to do in relation to this. So without further ado, let me bring this forward and we can just go through um, each one. So um, I've done it in rows of nine. And the reason why I've done it in rows of nine, because these connect with the nine planets. So, for example, this would be uh, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury and the Moon. So they would be nine of the Sephiroth. Obviously, the tenth Sephiroth would be the Earth, but we know the Earth isn't a planet flying in space. So... We're just concentrating on the nine because we we view the planets from Earth. But anyway, regardless of that, um, and also, yeah, uh, the blue corresponds with Saturn, the green corresponds with the sun, and the red corresponds with the moon as well, as you can see up here. But if we just start from the top, obviously, um, yeah, also in relation to the words, blue is Hebrew, green is Greek, and red is uh, Arabic. So if we take Aleph, which corresponds with would correspond with A in the English language, we can see that in Greek in um, Hebrew it's called Aleph. In Greek it's called Alpha, and in he in uh, Arabic it's called Aleph. So you can see that they're pretty much all the same. And in Stan Tennant's video, I think the name of the video is called um, The God of Abraham and the uh, Hebrew Alphabet. He explains that these three languages are very sacred because ultimately, when you look at the actual glyphs or the symbols for the letters, they're all based on different sections of the Taurus field. And he explains that that's why they're sacred because all the glyphs are based on the Taurus field. But I suggest, um, yeah, if you want to look at that in more detail, you should check out his videos. But I'm just incorporating some of this into this because it makes a lot of sense. 
and it's just valuable information basically and it also just goes to show how the abrahamic religions are really connected because the alphabets are pretty much identical the only difference is is that uh, greek and hebrew have 27 letters whereas arabic has 28 and uh, the reason why the arabic has 28 because the arabic is based on the 28 lunar mansions because as we've discussed in the previous lesson that islam is based on the moon so a lot of their doctrine and a lot of their um kind of the way they read the universe is based on the moon because they also have uh, go by a lunar a 12 month uh, lunar calendar as well but anyway let's get through the letters so um yeah so b in hebrew would correspond with bet in greek it would be better and in arabic it would be bar and then when we get to uh c well it's a c the third letter is c in english as you can see up here but this in hebrew greek and um arabic it more corresponds more with a g and i'm going to correspond that to the zodiac as well by explaining to you um how the meaning of these letters and what they mean and obviously the d we can see here in Hebrew is Dalit, in um, Greek is Delta, and in Arabic is Dal. So the way I look at these, again, this is just from my own syncretization. The first four would correspond with Aries, Taurus, uh, Gemini, and Cancer. Because Dalit, which are in Greek, in um Greek is delta so delta is where water runs from so obviously we know the fourth sign is cancer and cancer corresponds with water but dalith dalit or dalith in hebrew means to pour so you can see how number four has a correlation with water and also this one here in hebrew which is gimel and in greek gamma and in Hebrew is Jim. Well, Gimel means camel. And the camel has the two humps. And the two humps could be symbolized as Gemini or the two twins or the two pillars. And also we know that um, the third sign is Gemini, which is Gim or Gem. So it also connects with this number three here, Gemini, Jim gamma so you can see there's a connection there the b obviously would correlate with the ball for the second one and alif or a would correspond with aries but moving on um the, the fifth letter in those alphabets you have hey in hebrew and epsilon in greek and the ha in um arabic obviously my pronunciations are not 100 percent. so if there's any arabic or greek or jewish people watching this please forgive me if my pronunciations are not perfect so it's interesting when we come to the number six um in hebrew we have the letter vav and then in arabic we have the letter wow which is similar but then here in in um the greek section you can see i've put a little bracket around it and that is because um in the archaic greek they had a letter for vav was the sixth letter vowel in ancient greek but in modern greek they've subtracted some of the letters and i think it's three of them if i'm not mistaken which are the ones i've put in bracket which is Val, Sard, and Copper, which I'll get to later down in the list. So um, there might be, so people might say, oh, um, in Greek, Zeta is number six because this one has been taken out. That is true for the modern 
Greek alphabet, but for the original archaic one, wow, or oh, this was also called digamma, number six, uh, the sixth letter in Greek was called digamma, which digamma means diagamma, which means two times three. And if you look at number three in Greek, it's called gamma or gamma. But in the modern Greek, this number six is not there anymore. So it's kind of, um, yeah, it's also called an obsolete letter. That's what they call it when you study languages. There's something called an obsolete letter. But also moving on for the seventh letter, we have Zion in Hebrew, Zeta in Greek and Zai in um, Arabic. Then we have Het in Hebrew, Eta in Greek and Ha in Arabic. Then when we move to the ninth, we've got Tet for the Hebrew, Theta in Greek and Ta in Arabic again. Please excuse me if my pronunciation's not perfect when it comes to um, pronouncing them. Uh, yeah, the tenth letter you have Yod in Hebrew, Yotta in Greek, and Ya in Arabic. And then we go to eleven. You have uh, Kaf, Kappa, and Kaf. And then we get to uh, number 12. We have lambda in Greek. We have lamed in Hebrew. And then we have lam in Arabic. So again, you can see pretty much they're all the same. Same with the next one, number 13. You've got mem in Hebrew, mu in Greek, and mim in Arabic. Then, uh, by the way, mem in Hebrew corresponds with water. And nun, this next one, corresponds with fish, means fish. And also you can see, again, in the three languages, they're all very, very similar. You've got nun, nu, and nun. Uh, for number 15, in Hebrew, we have samech, which uh, actually... Um, George Carey in the Zodiac and the Sorts of Salvation talks about how Samech corresponds to stomach, uh, to the stomach. And it's interesting because uh, it's the 15th letter. And obviously, when you reduce numbers, 15 equals six. And we know that Virgo in uh, medical astrology is um, corresponds with the stomach and is the sixth sign. So it's really interesting that it has the same numerical value and has the same meaning. Um, I've mentioned this already about George Carey saying how Samek means stomach in my other series of Zodiac and the Sorts of Salvation, which you can also check out as well. So then moving on, in Hebrew, we have Ayin, Greek Omicron, and Islam Ayin. The only one that's different is the Greek one in this one. Ion means actually means your eye. And Omicron in Greek means little o. So they've got the same meaning, but the only one different in this one would be the Greek. Obviously, Ion and Ion is the same. Then we get to the 17th letter, which is Pe in Hebrew, Pi in Greek, and Fa in um, Arabic. And so people might say, Fa, that's an F these two are P's but if you know that um, when you know understand interchangeables in language P and F are interchangeable so you get things like um, the word fill or philosophy sounds like a F but in English we spell it with PH so F and P are interchangeable uh, another really interesting um thing I found out from watching Stan Tennant the other day uh, when he was talking about this letter uh, this letter Sad which is uh, again in Greek it was San but it's not there in the modern one which is why I've put it in brackets so Sade or Sad he was explaining means the enlightened one 
And that made sense to me because I know I'm not saying Saad Guru is enlightened or is someone we should follow, but it made sense of the name Saad Guru. So Saad Guru literally translates to enlightened guru because Stan Tenen was saying how Saad means enlightened. So then now when we get to the bottom row, uh, in 19 we have Kuf, and then again, this is another missing one in Greek, and then in Arabic we have Kuf. Well, it's interesting because Stan Tenen mentioned that Kuf means monkey and it also means skull. But interestingly, in Turkish, the word for your skull or your head is kafa. And then we've got the Arabic, which is kaf, and then the Hebrew, which is kuf. So again, just knowing different languages and knowing what they all mean, it makes so much sense. Again, number 20, we have um, in Hebrew, the letter resh. Uh, in Greek, we have ro. And in Arabic, we have Ra. And then moving on for 21, we have Shin in Hebrew, Sigma in Greek, and Shin in Arabic. Then the last one, they're literally all the same. We have for number 22, we have Tav in Hebrew, Tau in Greek, and Ta in Arabic. And then also um, after that, we have like final or later additions, meaning these are letters that were later added. Because although the Hebrew alphabet has 27, it's also referred to as 22 as well. Because these ones are the, the last um, five in the uh, Hebrew and Greek alphabet are kind of add-ons. They're like same letters. Uh, so we have mem, this is a final mem, and that's a normal mem. So you have two different types of mems. They're almost like add-ons, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, and then we've got nun, chi, and dal, pay, psi, and dud. And then we have zade, omega, and za. So, yeah, so this was just a video just to show you guys on how all the Abrahamic religions are the same and literally they're just kind of one big system but split into three different things which is the israel which is the islam christianity and judaism so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh video this was just like there's a lot more stuff you could talk about this is a very very deep subject but obviously because i'm introducing it to you guys i'm just giving you guys the basics and again, just building upon the philosophy that all languages are interchangeable and they all come from each other or they're all very similar. And especially with the Abrahamic religions, as you can see, literally all these are identical. So let me just put this back. Um, yeah, I've pretty much mentioned everything that I had in mind. Yeah. Um, other things I could mention, the, the, uh, the three letters would correspond with Saturn, the six, uh, the letters with six would correspond with the sun, and the, the letters that correspond with nine correspond with the moon. Interestingly, I just see something um, in a, the, the, the letter C or X, Z, it's X, I in Greek. Uh, is number 15, so obviously 1 and 5 equals 6. So it has the numerical value of 6. But when we take the English letter of X, it's the 24th letter, which also 2 and 4 equals 6. So when you like look at even uh, bringing English into it, there are a lot of connections as well. So, for example, um, L in English corresponds with 3 and 12. And then the same when you get Lamed, Lambda and Lum, they correspond with 12, which goes down to three. Um, obviously, the A, the B, the D is all similar. Ultimately, English is just a derivation from these alphabets as well. Like we always say, all alphabets are all related to each other anyway.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or I didn't make anything clear, feel free to message me on the inbox and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Peace, love and blessings. I'm out. Peace.